Following the last tutorial I made on the basic first-person character controller, today I'll try to recreate the jetpack mechanic from the game Slime Ranger. I'm going to be using the code from the last video as a baseline. The jetpack mechanic just means gaining Y velocity over time. And just like last time, I declared a bunch of macros for easier testing and optimizing. The way we start up our jetpack is by keeping track of the time we hold our dedicated jump button, or when we're already airborne, the state change is instant. By state, I mean that I added an additional walk state to my state machine enum. Also, you need to make sure to lock the potential changes to the state machine when in jetpack state. Back to the physics process function, after the state change, we want to update our movement variables used during the calculations in the update collider function. Here, Slime Rancher also drains your energy when starting up jetpack by 10 points. Next up, we also don't want the player to be able to jump when in jetpack state, so we have to lock that too. This brings me to a problem in the way I chose to implement the state machine. Instead of creating functions representing the individual states, like handle walk, handle jump, or handle jetpack, and putting them all in a switch case in the process function, which would make it so that I don't have to worry about the weird interactions between the states, which are basically transitions, I have instead made it so that I have driving variables like the current max speed, which the values of update during the change of states. And with those, I instead don't have any duplicate code, but I need to add extra conditional statements. Anyhow, once the player is in the jetpack state, we won't remove the gravity. Then we want to use the same trick I talked about in the movement video and calculate how different our current Y velocity is compared to the maximum provided by jetpack. This will result in a larger boost at the start which will gradually stabilize at the peak using interpolation. Finally, due to the level design of Slime Rancher, I presume, you can't go up infinitely with jetpack. There is a limit to how high the jetpack gets you, which is dependent on your Y position the last time you were in a grounded state. This can go down if you're falling from where you were standing last time, like in this clip. Another part of the jetpack mechanic in Slime Rancher is the energy consumption. It is set up so that you have to wait quite some time for the regeneration to kick in, but the replenish rate is quite high in my opinion. For this, we're just keeping a timer from the time you transition from jetpack state to a different one. Two bonus things in this video. First of all, a way to set up the energy bar. You could utilize clipping children of the canvas item node and use default progress bar with custom style. Or the second option is just to use the textured progress bar and add a label for the text to the middle. Second of all, is that when it comes to the jetpack audio, to achieve the fade in and out effect, you can just use linear 2db or db2 linear functions and lurk the current audio stream volume. But that's it for the Slime Ranger jetpack mechanic in Godot 4. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover in the future videos, let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in implementing your own first person character controller, watch the video in the top right. Also, if you liked my videos, I'd be grateful if you subscribed. But that is everything for me, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.